We're going to talk about rational functions now. These are super fractions, sort of. The word rational, I have a note here, the word rational comes from the Latin word for fraction, ratio. You remember ratios. We're going to find the domain of this function. That is, we're going to remove the numbers that make it undefined. Let's see what makes a fraction undefined. Let's take a fraction like 2 thirds. There's nothing wrong with that fraction. It's a good fraction. Ah, but what about This is a very bad fraction. This fraction is undefined. Totally. So, we have to prevent that from happening at all cost. Now, here's how you find the numbers that are the troublemakers, so you can kick them out of the domain. Remember, the domain is the set of all the x-coordinates. You don't want the bad guys in the x-coordinates. They make very bad things happen. So here's our function. 3 over x squared plus 3x minus 4. The first step is to set the denominator equal to 0. In all truth, we don't much care about the numerator. We don't care about that 3. Not right now. Not when finding the domain. All that matters is the denominator. Now, the numerator is important for other things you'll learn about in college algebra. But it's not important when it comes to the domain. All right, so you set your denominator, x squared plus 3x minus 4, equal to 0 and solve this quadratic equation. That's step 2. Solve the quadratic equation. We're going to do this by factoring, because that's the only method you've learned so far. You'll learn another one. x plus 4 is equal to 0, so x equals negative 4. x minus 1 is equal to 0, so x equals positive 1. Right in here. Now, I go and I find x equals negative 4 and x equals 1 on the number line. Negative 4, positive 1. And I take them out. Goodbye. They're in the trash can for this particular function. Now, the numbers I'm allowed to use are all of the numbers to the left of negative 4 but not negative 4, all the numbers between negative 4 and positive 1, and, but not positive 1, and all of the numbers to the right of positive 1, but not positive 1. So the domain lacks the two numbers negative 4 and positive 1. Now, domain can be written in two ways. Set builder notation, x such that x doesn't equal negative 4, comma, x doesn't equal 1, or interval notation, negative infinity to negative 4, in parentheses, unioned up with, letter U, 
all of the numbers between negative 4 and positive 1, right here, in parentheses, unioned up with 1 to infinity, all the numbers over here. You're going to find there are always two ways to write the domain of a rational function. When you do it, most of the time, set builder notation is much easier than interval notation. For just about everything else, I think uh, interval notation is easier. Okay, here's another, another function. Remember, you can always back up in the video, so don't worry about it. Here's 7 over x squared minus 4. To find the domain, I set x squared minus 4 equal to 0. This is the difference of two perfect squares, so I factor by the difference of squares and set equal to 0. Because this is an equation, then I set each of these linear binomial factors equal to 0, and I discover that x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. So I take the number negative 2 off the x-axis, and I take positive 2 off the x-axis, and I'm allowed to use all of these numbers, all of these numbers, all of these numbers for my domain. Set builder notation will be, will have braces on each end, and then all of x such that x doesn't equal negative 2 and x doesn't equal positive 2. The interval notation tells you what the intervals are. Negative infinity to the left side of negative 2, unioned up with the right side of negative 2 to the left side of positive 2, unioned up with the left side of positive 2, the right side of positive 2, all the way to positive infinity. And we use the U sign, which means union. Union sign is like a plus sign, except it's a way of sticking sets together, sets of numbers, but intervals of numbers. Of course, we use that with interval notation and not with set builder notation. Okay, now a different topic. Simplify rational equations. Actually, that should say functions or expressions. Let's get rid of that right now. Let's take care of this because it's a mistake. Expressions, or we could also say functions, but let's say expressions. There now. Here is a rational expression. It's a fraction with variables and numbers in it. We're going to factor it. 54 equals 9 times 6. I have a 9 in the denominator. The 9s will cancel. So I'm left with a 6 in the numerator and a y to the ninth, and a y squared on the bottom. Ah, but the y's are a base. So I can rewrite this as 6y to the 9 minus 2, which is 6y to the 7th power. This is using those rules that you learned in beginning algebra, and we'll review them a little later. Simplify by removing factors of 1. And they said the same thing there. What do they mean by that? Well, here, 9 over 9 is 1. Okay? All right. 
Well, now, if I factor out, well, if I factor the numerator by GCF, 2 is my GCF. So I'll have 2 parentheses C minus 3 over 2. The 2's equal 1. So I cancel them out, leaving me with C minus 3. I have simplified this rational expression. Look how much easier it looks now. Now we're going to simplify 12x minus 16 over 24. Well, 12 is 4 times 3, and 16 is 4 times 4, so 4 is going to be the GCF of the numerator. I pull it out, and my leftovers are 3x minus 4. Meanwhile, 24 equals 4 times 6. 4 over 4 is 1. That's what canceling really is. And I'm left with 3x minus 4 over 6. And no, you cannot divide 3 into 6 unless you also had a 3 over there. So this is your answer. You have simplified this. You've broken it down so that it looks much easier now, much more broken down to its basics without a lot of other stuff. Which one would you choose, this or that? This is much cleaner. All right, now we're going to be simplifying by removing factors of 1. But it's a little more complicated, isn't it? We're going to factor. 36 is 6 squared, so we factor this by the difference of 2 squares, s plus 6 times s minus 6. On the bottom, we have 1 as the leading coefficient, so all we have to do is factor positive 36 and find two numbers that add up to negative 12. Find a factor pair whose component parts, whose numbers, add up to negative 12. And here you have minus 6 and minus 6. So we'll have s minus 6, s minus 6. The s minus 6s cancel. That is, s minus 6 over s minus 6 is 1. Whenever you have exactly the same thing in the numerator and the denominator, you get a 1 which is the same thing as, um, as canceling. That's what canceling is. So we're left with s plus 6 over s minus 6. And a note that s minus 6 over s minus 6 is 1 right there. Okay, now we're going to simplify again. We're going to factor x squared minus 9x plus 18 over x squared plus 4x minus 21. That will give me x minus 6 over x minus 3, uh, x minus 6 times x minus 3 over x plus 7 times x minus 3 x minus 3 over x minus 3 is 1. So I'm left with x minus 6 over x minus 7. Now we're going to multiply and divide rational functions or rational expressions. We have z to the fifth over 4z plus 32 
times 7z plus 56 over 7 times z to the 7th. What we're going to do is completely factor every numerator and every denominator. z to the 5th power is z times z times z times z times z. 7z plus 56 has 7 as a GCF. 7 parentheses z plus 8. Down on the bottom, we have 4 as a GCF, which leaves me 4 parentheses z plus 8. And then over here, I have 7 times z to the 7th, so I'll have 7 z's all multiplied together. And then we start canceling. Z these five z's will cancel these five z's, leaving me a z squared. This 7 and this 7 will cancel because 7 over 7 is 1. z plus 8 over z plus 8 is 1. And z to the 5th over z to the 5th is 1. So I am left with nothing up top, but don't put a zero, because there is really something up front. Remember that every time you cancel, you have a one. So there's a one up top. On the bottom, I have a four, and z times z, which is z squared. So when I multiply these two rational expressions, if I factor and cancel everything I can, then I wind up with something that looks much easier. Let's move on. I have z squared minus 49 over z squared. Do not even be tempted to cancel like that. This fraction bar groups z squared minus 49, so it's just like having parentheses around the z squared minus 49. This is one thing. It doesn't match that, so don't cancel it. Instead, we are going to factor every numerator and every denominator. 49, after all, equals 7 squared. So we're going to factor z squared minus 7 squared as z plus 7, z minus 7. And z squared minus 7z, I factor a z out of both terms. That'll be z parentheses z minus 7, parentheses closed. Over here, z squared equals z times z. And over here, z squared plus z minus 56 equals z plus 8 times z minus 7. Now we start canceling. z minus 7 over z minus 7 is 1. That's why they cancel. Z over Z is 1. That's why they cancel. Unfortunately, I don't have anything else that cancels. So I'm left with Z plus 7 times Z minus 7 over Z times Z plus 8. Right there. Now, this looks pretty long, but we can do this. We can do this. My first step is to factor x squared minus 4x minus 32 into x minus 8 times x plus 4. And 4x to the third minus 9x squared, well, that means I have an x squared 
GCF. I pull x squared out of both terms. That leaves me with the leftovers 4x minus 9. So I have x squared times 4x minus 9. Up here, I have 16x to the third minus 81x. Both of these terms contain an x. I pull it out to the front, and my leftovers are 16x squared minus 81. Then, I have 8x minus 64. 64 is 8 times 8. So 8 is my greatest common factor, my GCF. I pull out an 8, and I'm left with x minus 8. But I am not done yet. 16 is a perfect square, and x squared is a perfect square. So 16x squared equals parentheses 4x, parentheses closed, squared. 4x times 4x is 16x squared. 81 is 9 squared. So I'm going to be able to factor 16x squared minus 81 as the difference of two squares. And that will factor into 4x plus 9 times 4x minus 9. So that over here I have x times 4x plus 9 times 4x minus 9. This is what I have right now. x minus 8 times x plus 4 over x times x times 4x minus 9 times x times 4x plus 9 times 4x minus 9 over 8 times x minus 8. And now I start canceling. x minus 8 and x minus 8, that is x minus 8, let me scroll down because here are some notes, x minus 8 over x minus 8 is 1. So I can eliminate that. I can cancel. x over x is 1, so I can cancel. 4x minus 9 over 4x minus 9 is 1, so I can cancel. Therefore, what's left is x plus 4 times x plus 9 up top over x times 8, which is written 8x. And then the notes are down below. Finally, we're going to divide. And I do this problem two ways. I was trying to figure out what I did. Well, let's look at this. Now, how can I do this? Nope, that's not working. Just scrolling is not helping me. There. This is better. 18x to the 7th over 2y to the 10th divided by 81x to the 5th times 6y squared. <laughs> the first thing you do is you write down the first fraction. You change the division sign to a multiplication sign. And then you take the reciprocal of the second fraction, that is, you flip it. Now 6y squared is on top, 8x to the fifth is on the bottom, and instead of a division sign, I have a multiplication sign. This is just the way you were taught to multiply fractions in elementary school. Now we start to factor everything. 18 is 9 times 2. x to the 7th is 7x's multiplied together. 
This is 2y to the 10th, so we have 2 times 10 y's that are multiplied together. 6 is 2 times 3, y squared is y times y. 81 is, well, I want to have a 9 there to cancel out with that, but 81 is 9 times 9, so it will be 9 times 3 times 3. That way, 9 over 9 is 1, 3 over 3 is 1, 2 over 2 is 1, x to the 5th over x to the 5th is 1, and y squared over y squared, did I already say that? That's 1, and so what I'm left with is a 2x squared over 3y to the 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, 8, y to the 8th. Now that's kind of a very basic way to do this problem. So let's look at those rules you learned in beginning algebra. Here we have 18x to the 7th over 2y to the 10th divided by 81x to the 5th, 6y squared. That's going to equal 18x to the 7th times 2y to the 10th uh, over 2y to the 10th times 6y squared over 81x to the 5th. Now we gather our numbers together. 18 times 6 over 2 times 81. The x's are matching bases. The y's our matching bases, so I'll have x to the 7th over x to the 5th, y to the 2 over y to the 10th. So I'll factor out these and factor out these and cancel where I can. x to the 7 over x to the 5th is x to the 7 minus 5. The largest number is in the numerator, so I know the x will stay in the numerator and we'll subtract 5 from 7. On the other hand, with the y's, the largest exponent is in the denominator, so I know the y's will stay down there. So I subtract 2 from 10 down there, and I get 2x squared over 3y to the 8th. And this is much shorter when you utilize those rules. Okay, I think that's the last one, yeah. We have z squared minus 1, which is really c squared minus 1 squared. 1 times 1 is 1, so this is the difference of two squares z squared minus 1 over z squared minus 6z plus 9 divided by 6z minus 6 over z squared minus 2z minus 3. I write down the first fraction because this is a fraction, but we can call it a rational expression. I, I substitute a multiplication sign for the division sign and I flip this rational expression, I take the reciprocal. Now 6z minus 6 is on the bottom, and z squared minus 2z minus 3 is in the numerator up top. Now I factor z squared minus 1 squared by the difference of two squares. I factor z squared minus 6z plus 9 into z minus 3 times z minus 3. I factor z squared minus 2z minus 3 into z minus 3 times z plus 1, and I factor 6z minus 6 into 6 times z minus 1, and I cancel. z minus 1 over z minus 1 is 1, 
z minus 3 over z minus 3 is 1, and I'm left with z plus 1 times z plus 1 over 6 times z minus 3, and z plus 1 times z plus 1 should be written as z plus 1 squared. The parentheses are around z plus 1, and you have a power 2 over 6 parentheses z minus 3. And we have now, let's go back to the beginning. We found the domain of, of rational functions or rational expressions. We have simplified rational expressions. And we have multiplied rational expressions. And we have divided rational expressions. And all of you are now experts. Remember, you can always slow down the video. You can always back it up. You can always play it again. I'm hoping that I'll have a um, clickable table of contents on this so that you can jump from topic to topic. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.